All right, let's take a look at the actual structural weaknesses in the web protocol. Although it's been known for at least 10 years, probably more, that web is insecure, you still find it all over the place, which is really sort of disconcerting. From my home in Atlanta, I can see 90 plus access points on a good day, and generally about a third of those are gonna be web, which is just insane. Because if you've got an associated client on a web network, you will crack the web key, no problem. Generally, it takes you less than three minutes, five minutes on a slower box, depending on your range. But the weaknesses themselves are actually pretty substantial. Uh, the web algorithm, the web implementation, should I say, is actually RC4, which RC4 is using a lot of types of encryption. And RC4 is fine. It's the implementation of RC4 that's the actual issue here. We'll see RC4 in uh, Microsoft's point-to-point -point encryption. We'll see it um, in uh, TLS and SSL. We'll also see it in the encryption of the SAM file on, at the local system level. So RC4 is fine. It's actually this thing called the pseudo random number generator that violates the concept of diffusion. Um, diffusion basically is removing any relationship between the encryption key and the corresponding ciphertext. We have a 40 or 104 bit static key. That's a problem. Anytime you use the same encryption key over and over again, you've got traction for a cryptanalysis attack. You really just need two packets encrypted with the same key, and you're, you're on your way. You're getting started. So for randomness, it's a 24-bit initialization vector that's going to be concatenated with each static key to produce the resultant encryption key. This guy's transmitted in the clear. It has to be so the receiving host can actually append it to the known static key in the crypt web packet. So we have a 24-bit IV plus a 40 or 104-bit, which gives us 64 or 128-bit encryption. We run it through the, the actual cipher itself, and then the resultant output is our key string. That's going to be XOR with our converted plain text to produce the resultant cipher text. So the XOR process. Basically, if the, two XOR, uh, if the two inputs are the same, it's going to be a zero. If they're different, it's going to be a one. So what we end up with is an XOR key stream against the plain text. Cyphertext can then actually be XOR against the key stream again to get the plain text right back. So the idea is that we have to capture duplicate IVs in order to have two instances of the same static key. That's not even really the ultimate weakness. Um, the first initial concerns with WEP were that there's not enough of these guys. 16,777,216 is not enough. So we needed to actually lengthen that key uh, for things like WPA, PA2. That's one of the improvements that's actually going to be made. So there's a 48-bit initialization vector. We're also going to use message integrity code for the error checking and a couple other things as well. But that's not even the problem. There was a discovery. Three guys, Flora Martin and Shamir, I believe, wrote a paper called Statistical Weaknesses of the Web Algorithm. So this is going to be referred to as the FMS attack. It was later enhanced by a hacker named Cork, and the current iteration is the PDW attack. I need 10,000 of these interesting IVs in order to be able to potentially crack the key. At 30,000, I've got a 50-50 chance. And it just keeps getting better from there. I've never had to capture more than 72,000 IVs to crack a web key. And that doesn't take long when there's traffic on the network. The problem is there's not always traffic on the network. So what we end up doing is we can speed things up by attacking the access point with captured ARP requests from an associated client. So we locate an access point, we find an associated client, and we're actually gonna boot them off the network. So I'm a DAuth frame as the attacker. And that kicks him off of the access point. There's actually a couple things we can get out of this. The DAuth is sort of a magic packet. It's gonna kick him off the AP, He's going to flush his ARP cache, and he's going to reassociate. In doing so, he's going to disclose the SSID of the network in the clear. 
He's also going to send a series of ARP requests, generally six, to the AP, and we can intercept this. This is an ear, by the way. It's not the greatest in the world, but I'm listening for it. I'm going to capture that ARP request, and I'm just going to fire it back at the access point over and over and over again. That's going to speed up the collection of the IDs, and that expedites the attack tremendously. Once you capture enough keys, the attack itself is like a split second. It's just a matter of getting enough variability and actually capturing enough IVs to get, there's a subset of IVs called interesting IVs that actually give things away. So if we collect 30,000 or more, we got a 50-50 chance, and it just keeps getting better. My current records for cracking 128-bit WEP, 46 seconds. 64-bit WEP, 17 seconds. It's a slam dunk every time. So if you find an access point with an associated client that's using WEP, you can use air crack, the variety of adapters. You can also use cane and able with your peak cap adapter.